Hamilton, big country, coming off a knockout over Matt Mitrione. And Shane Carwin. Shane Carwin puts everyone to sleep. Everyone who's chin that fist touch, they go nighty night. Touch it. His name should be the Sandman. Yeah. He, he puts like, you to sleep. Yeah, he puts you to sleep. And and, and uh, uh, JDS has felt their power, wasn't phased by it, picked them apart. And both those guys, too, are pretty decent wrestlers. Now, they're not wrestlers on the level of K. They don't have the quickness, the explosiveness of it. But JDS dealt with the wrestling with ease. Now, when I think about this fight, and I'm, I'm going to the breakdown already. I know I'm jumping ahead here. I just got so excited. I think of two fights, and both fights I think about are Kane fights. The first fight I think about is, 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 is uh, or excuse me, one's a Kane fight, one's a junior fight. The first fight I think about is JDS versus Frank Mir. In the first two minutes of the first round, Frank Mir changes level. He gets deep on that leg. He shoots, that, he shoots a single leg. He shoots fast. He gets in there fast. He doesn't move anywhere near as fast as Kane Velasquez. Now, Frank Mir couldn't finish that takedown, but if Cain Velasquez changes levels and gets in on that, he will finish this takedown. And one thing we haven't seen, we've heard about, but we haven't seen the, un, the untested and unproven ground skills of Junior Dos Santos. You know, uh, we, we hear he's great, we hear he's slick, you know, but we haven't seen it. And, and when I think about uh, 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 Cain Velasquez being on top of him, the Cain Velasquez I saw against Bigfoot Silva, that's a scary prospect. That's dangerous. Now, when I look at JDS, though, how quick he is, how explosive he is, how light, he's, light he is on his toes. Someone like that, who moves like that, is usually quick everywhere. So I see if, if, if Kane can get him down and do some damage, I see JDS being able to scramble. And if not, at least weather the storm, slow down the onslaught of Kane Velasquez, not take the beating that Junior Dos Santos is, and then if it goes to the second round, they start off standing again. You know, they're on their feet again. Where, where, where JDS, I just think he has the advantage. I think he's got the power, the speed. And when I think about this advantage, it always goes back to me. The thing that always, the big question mark over Cain Velasquez for me is the, uh, the Czech Congo fight. You know, yeah. Czech Congo put him on put him on Bambi legs four times. You know, he rocked him. He had Czech had Kane out on his feet. Luckily, Czech can't wrestle his way out of wet paper bag, and Kane is a phenomenal wrestler because Kane recovered by utilizing wrestler, utilizing his wrestling. But I just I just Czech, you know, he's not known to be a power puncher. He's known to be a striker, but not a devastating knockout artist. And if he's doing that to Kane, and we saw what Junior did to Kane in the first fight, I think Junior's going to find his chin. I, I think he's going to have the gas. He's going to have the endurance and the ferocity to to find that chin at some point in this fight. Whether it's the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth round, I just I think he's going to catch him. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He catches him. Um, I don't think it's going to go the same way. I think this does go past the first round. Uh, but, you know, you talk about how Kane's wrestling, and that's going to be, you know, the deciding factor. Will he be able to finish that takedown and get him down and keep him down? We're talking about a guy who's only been taken down twice. JDS has only been taken down twice and spent a total time of 13 seconds on his back. All right, he's popped right back up each both times. All right, so that's going to be the key because – Kane, if he gets on top of you, he's relentless, and he will pound away, and he will land shot after shot after shot. The question is, can he get it there? I don't know if he can. We'll have to wait and see. But right now, I got to pick Junior Dos Santos in this fight. So that's, is that how everybody's going? You going Junior Dos Santos? Phil and I, but you sound like you're going with uh, Velasquez. I'm going to go out on a limb on this fight. I don't know what it is. Kane Velasquez in this fight. And well, I know it's not because I, I like him more. I just, I just so don't wait, see you, him coming. You said you don't like him? Oh, I do. I like I, oh, I, I him. Uh, uh, let me correct that. <laughs> it's not that I don't like him more. I, I, I do. I like both of them as fighters. I respect both of them as fighters. I think they're both great in their own way. I just think this fight goes differently than the first one. I don't think that Cain Velasquez is going to give him that opportunity to put him out in the first minute of the fight. And I think it is going to go a distant fight. I really I feel this fight going a few rounds, at least three rounds. Well, let me just say this. No matter what happens tomorrow night, I do not think this will be the last time these guys are fighting each other. No, no. I think this is one of those things. I think they two, they are the two best heavyweights in the division. I think that everyone else behind them, including Alistair Overeem, will lose to both of them. And I think no matter what happens, the, 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 the loser tomorrow will get one or two, one or two wins and be back facing yep. the, the other soon. Yeah. Unless it ends in the first minute again. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, still I really think, yeah. Still, the two really? top in the division, I think well, they're the two thing. top. Let's, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, let's say it does end in the first division and Kane gets demolished, okay? And Junior wins. Okay, Junior goes on, defends it a couple more times, and Kane goes on a three, two, three, four fight, devastating win streak, you know, crushing people. There's no way he can't give him another shot. Agreed.
They're okay. gonna, they will be fighting again, I think. And one thing I think about this fight, too, is, A, I, I expect not just the wrestling. I expect we saw this early on, and I think they'll do it again. I expect to see more leg kicks out of Cain Velasquez. The way Junior stands, he stands in that boxing stance, very, very uh, angular, almost to the side like a pure boxer, which does expose him to the leg kicks. Here's the thing, though. What's the counter to a leg kick? A punch, a straight right to the pipe. A nasty one, too. A from nasty. Junior. Yeah, <laughs> so I see him eating that to land that punch. Um, Kane does have good leg kicks. He, he does. does. He, he does. He Before he got caught, does. he looked great with it. Yeah. You know, but the other thing that, 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 that just, I go back to Junior catching him, is the striking style of Kane. Kane's not like a slick, elusive, fast, in and out fighter. He's grimy. He gets in there, one, two, three, four to the body, five, six to the head, putting five, six, putting three, four, five, six punches together in front of a devastating knockout artist is your quickest way to, to nighty night. You See, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kane needs like six punches while Junior only needs one. Exactly. And I don't think I don't know if Kane has the ability to just throw one to pot shot nope. the stick and move. I don't, that's not his. That's not his style of striking. You look at his whole fights. You know he puts punches and bunches. He puts combos together. He's more combos than McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> punches and bunches. I like it. So if, right, we're two to one for uh, for Junior Dos Santos. Yes, yeah. we're both. Going. What about you, Heidi? <laughs> I'm going with Kane. Of okay. course, you know she's going to go por la raza. Yeah, you know. raza. <laughs> what about you, Armando? Who do you think? Come on. Come, come on, on, man. He's going with Kane. Of course I'm going with Bro, Kane. Here, here, <laughs> going with <laughs> wow, we okay. just turned this around to being 3-2 to two, uh, Kane Velasquez. That doesn't count, and I'll tell you why. Because for every other country except from Americans, when it comes to their, a person from their country fighting another country, they're going to choose the, they're gonna choose their nationality. They always do. I'm talking to uh, someone, uh, uh, Paul Sack, about, about when uh, Shogun was going to fight um, Bones Jones. And there's no one on earth that picked Shogun to win that fight. And she's like, oh, I, everyone says he can't, but he'll do it because he's Shogun, Shogun. And all the Brazilians are saying, Shogun, Shogun. They will always, if you're from another country, because Americans <laughs> won't do that. Americans are like, oh, I don't care. He's American, but I want to pick this guy. You know, we we just don't have that sense of nationalism, that, that, that pride, you know. But their votes don't count, you know what I mean? They're like, Por la raza, they're picking, my canal, <laughs> can he will win? <laughs> they're well, picking with their hearts, not do. with their brains. What they're we're picking with do, their hearts. What, what we're going to do shortly on the website is we are going to have bets. So everybody's going to have a percentage to see just what our winning percentage is. And I know Phil's going to be very high because his winning percentage is very high. Just as yours is, Joseph, as well. I'm, I bet so I'm wait, like 78%. So, so then why it. would anyone right now, after hearing you say that, go out and put money on Kane? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I, my point ain't Kane's point, but sometimes I'm right. Uh, sometimes hey, I'm wrong. But a, a broken lot of clock is right twice a day, right? right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So there you have it. Uh, basically, the two, two experts on the show, the guys who analyze everything, basically say you can't lose if you go with Junior Dos Santos. Now, of course, on to another fight here. Jim Miller, Joe Lozon. What do you think? I think if you put Jim Miller and Joe Lozon together, I think they have a combined 958 fight of the night bonuses, if I'm correct. Uh, $58,000. <laughs> yeah, and... you can ask for more. I mean, Joe Lozon, guy's got 22 wins. All 22 of his wins are finishes. The guy's a finisher. He goes out there to make, to finish a fight. Jim Miller, not as many finishes, but that's always his intention. He goes out there, he's, he's a, a worker. This is a good fight. This really is. I mean, it's a shame Gray Maynard got hurt and had to pull out of the fight, but I don't think you could have found a better replacement than Jim Miller. So what's your pick? Jim Miller. You going with, you going with Miller time? I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with Jim Miller. I, I am, you know, both of these guys, it's a real shame. You know, both of them climb that 155 ladder all the time. They get those win streaks going. They get right up to the top, and then one of, they both have fallen off. I think Lozon's the one that falls off this time. It's a shame, too, because I love the guy, and I love watching him fight. He's so exciting. No happy hour for me. There's no Miller time. I'm staying at home, having a nice Italian dinner with a little lasagna. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, though. This one for me breaks down to intelligence. You guys remember when we had Jim Miller on the show? And I asked him, you know, what, what, what yeah. would you, in the Nate Diaz fight, you know, we all expected him to win. A lot of people expected him to win by using the wrestling. And he came out and started to strike with Nate Diaz. And that puzzled me. And I asked him, you know, would you tell yourself anything different? And he goes, no. And I said, well, do you feel like, you know, that, that maybe everyone you've lost to is either a champion or fought for the belt and you're almost this, you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. You know, is there something you need to change? And he says, no, I don't need to change anything. I'm doing everything right. It just comes down to luck. Some guys on certain nights are, are luckier than other guys. Okay, that sounded 
unintelligent to me. Now, when I look at Joe Lazon and I look at who's in, his, who's in his corner, Ricky Lindell, who I think is one of the best grappling, wrestling jits coach in the world, especially his story. His story is phenomenal. This guy, he never did any wrestling. He was a black belt in jiu-jitsu, the youngest ever, under Pedro Sauer, who was a Hicks and Gracie black belt. And, uh, and he goes and does a wrestling tournament in, uh, just on a fluke, just to try it, is seen by the great Kale Saunders and probably the greatest American wrestler of all time. And Kale says, you're so talented, I'm going to give you a full-ride scholarship to become wrestler for me in college. That's how good this kid Lundell is. So Lundell's coaching Lausanne, and what, blew, what really caught my eye with this one is their strategy in, in looking back with the, with the Jamie Varner fight. They, they, they game plan this to perfection. They said, Jamie always shoots like this. He shoots the head outside double. When he does this, these are the go-to moves we do. And they drilled it, and they drilled it, and they implemented that game plan to perfection. And they had transitions and submissions set up off of that. So when I look at that, and I look at them going to the drawing board, studying, studying Miller, seeing what he does, how he does it, what he does, and implementing certain moves, certain sweeps, certain transitions, certain setups, certain submissions off of everything he does, and then I hear Jim Miller saying, ah, oh, it's just going to come out of luck. I mean, I got to bet on Lauzon, you know? And when I watch them stylistically, I think uh, uh, Joe is a much better striker. I think his boxing is much more crisp the way he sets it up. Miller kind of has his elbow out and his chin down and, and runs forward with his chin up. You know, I, I don't think he's as sharp. And the way they grapple. Miller's a powerful guy who likes to get on top of you and shut you down. Joe is the master of scramble jitsu. You know, he's just scrambling. This, this, this guy scramble, scramble, scramble. You know, he should be a, he should be a, a, a cook always cooking eggs because he's scr- – that was horrible, huh? Scrambling <laughs> eggs. Just, that, was, that was a womp, womp, womp. No, but <laughs> you I, get the drift. I, I, get exa- I get your point exactly. And what you're talking about with the when Varner posts up with – his le- with his left hand and the way he slapped on that triangle, they practiced it, they drilled it, they got it done. That's the one thing about Joe Lozon. If you make a mistake, you are done. And he done. Not, but not I he, think Miller won't make the mistake. But here's the thing, though. That was my next point, though, is that Joe doesn't always wait for you to make the mistake. His scrambles create an opportunity for them to make a mistake. He creates your mistake. He puts you in a position by scrambling, by moving, by moving, by moving, and forces the mistake out of you. Well. All, all I know is I think Joe is one now, one bonus away from Anderson Silva for tying wow. him, right? For tying him for most in UFC history. Tough to tell you, though. Last With this card, there's quite a few nominees that could win. So this I is don't one know. of my nominees it's, for potential. It's a I got, possibility. I got a couple. I got three potential fight of the nights. This is one of them. Wineland and, and, and Pickett, Pickett is another one. And then Gallard and Varner, to me, could be a, a fight of the night as well. There's plenty of them. All right, so your pick is? I'm going with Miller. I, I I told you. I got to tell you, from listening to Joey talk about him, he's going with the tactical. I, you know what? And I like Jim Miller a lot. I feel the same way that you do, Phil. But I think I think Joey might be right in this one because I remember Joey being very concerned about that when we had Jim Miller on the show, and he said, "I just don't like the fact of the way he approaches the fight. He's, he's leaving it all up to luck." And Joe's going in being very tactical. I think Joe may be correct in this one, so I'm going with Joe Lazan. Yeah, we will see. I'm looking forward to it though. It's going to be a scrap. It's going to be a scrap. Either way, I'm going to love it. Yeah. What are you doing, Heidi? <laughs> I'm taking Joe Lozon. Joe Lozon. Aren't we supposed to go? Aren't we supposed to go to Joe Lozon's like like man cave and film there or something? We are with his Ghostbuster proton. Pack. And he's in town. We he should. He was be. actually down to do it, except for the fact that he had weigh-ins at the same time as our show. I uh, did actually speak with him, so I just wanted to update you on that. All right, we will have to. We will have to uh, put put something together to so, go visit know, his man cave. We, we don't have much time, and we got a whole. Yeah, lot of we do now. You know, what we can do though. We can we, when we bring Wybin on, we'll interview well, him for a second and help him break the rest of the card down. Well, yeah. I Actually, we should for the for the rest on the, the main event because it's three more middleweight three, three fights. middleweights. So why, before we get Chris Weidman on, why don't we do the rest of the card then? Skip the middleweights. Skip skip the middleweights so we'll because pick it in. Uh, yeah, which that's my pick right there fight for of fight the night. of the night. Brad Pickett against Eddie Wineland. I mean, eight fight of the night bonuses between the two of them under the Zufa contract. If you include WEC, um, both like to bang, both like to just sit there and put on a fun fight. It's just. Fight of the night written all over it. I'm with you. I, that's what I put on it. So, so give me your breakdown. What's your pick? I don't know. I look at this and I don't mean to. Uh, this is more fun than Gallagher or a food stand. <laughs> 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 it, that's all it is. That's all it is. I, you know, it, but it's a tough one to pick. I'm gonna have to. You know, Wineland looked so good in his last fi- fight, knocking out Jorgensen. No one's ever been able to do that. He was able to stop the takedowns of of uh, Scott Jorgensen. Very tough thing to do. Uh, Pickett, though, he's very well versed. You know, he's obviously you know his punching power, uh, but he's got great, uh, very underrated jujitsu in my opinion. This is a tough one. This is a flip of the coin one, but I'll go with Pickett. 
That's funny, man. This is where we're splitting again because <laughs> I, I think I think Pickett has the more tools in the arsenal, but the tools they both use, Wineland is sharper with. I think Pickett throws more loopier. He's a little more open up with the striking. He does like leg kicks and stuff like that. He does implement other weapons, whereas Wineland is pretty much a boxer. He stands in that stance, you know? And just like I said with the Junior, Junior Dos Santos fight, if... If Pickett tries to throw leg kicks, I think I think Eddie will try to eat him and counter him. He's got the punching power. Also, uh, Pickett's been hurt. He's been rocked a few times. He's been dropped. And I think Wineland's got the punching power that he's not just going to rock you. He's going to put you away. I think his boxing is sharper. He's long. He's got the reach. He's got the length. And he has the power behind it. Uh, I think I think Eddie can finish can finish Pickett. But I do. I'm with you. This is this is my other fight of the night potential contender. Yeah, definitely going to be fun. Going to be fun. So you both going with Pickett? No, no I'm he, going with Pickett. Pick he's, you're going, you're going he with picked line. Pickett. I stopped for half hour in Wine Line. In, uh, wine Line? Yeah. Wine Land. Yeah, I stopped at Wine gonna, Land. You, you're drinking the Eddie wine. Yeah, yeah. I, I passed on the Miller time for the wine. <laughs> All right. And uh, everybody else kind of feel the same way? What do you got? I got Pickett. Pickett. Wow. We got two Pickets, one Wine Land. Armando? I'm, I'm taking Pickett, too. It's oh it's listen. It doesn't. I'm going, it doesn't jo- I'm going with Joe on this one. I'm going to give him another one. Wineland. Listen to quote The Rock. It doesn't matter who wins because it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. <laughs> another fight on this FX prelims. Eric Perez, Byron Bloodworth. Yeah, you know Perez coming off that 17 second knockout he had over uh, Ken Stone at UFC 150. I think it's the fastest in. Bantamweight history, right. you know, under yeah W uh, in Zufa. Um, he trains with Greg Jackson. He's got a lot of hype coming behind him, you know. And Bloodworth's been out of the cage for over a year and a half. Uh, this is his second fight. At, uh, I think second fight at bantamweight. And his last fight, he didn't even make weight. And you lost. know, he had and he lost to Mike Easton, and he had a terrible cut weight cut. I you know. With the ring rust, with the I just I don't think this is a very good night for Bloodworth. I'm with you on that. I, I have Perez. Not not just that. Uh, I think Perez is sharper. He's got more finishes. Uh, he he is on a three fight win streak in the big show. Whereas Bloodworth is on has lost his only fight in the show. I think he's going to be more experienced, more relaxed out there. Also, you know they're really trying to develop this Mexican fan base, and I think him and Kane are the two big potential Mexican stars for the UFC. And I think this style is made for him. This fight is made for him to look good. So I've got Perez as well. And I think he'll be able to sub Bloodworth. Yeah, I think it's wherever the fight goes, Perez is is a little better. sharper, yeah, better, yeah. better. Yeah, I think we have a unanimous for Eric Perez. And you also as well, Heidi. Heidi gave me the thumbs up. And Armando's going with Perez as you well. You know that picking Perez. I told you, it's La Raza. <laughs> now this one, this next fight, before we go to break, I got to tell you, this this one intrigues me the most. But I have a definitive, definitive answer on this fight. Melvin Gillard, Jamie Vonner. My cousin. Like I was going to say, <laughs> and I looked at Joey. Not to be confused with our own very own Joey Vonner. But uh what do you think happens in this fight? Well, you know, Melvin's coming off the, his first KO loss ever. First time he's ever been knocked out to Cerrone. Um, at, but he got the fight of the night of it. Okay. Right. Varner, coming off submission loss to Lozon. But he got fight of the night for it. You know, so you know both these guys, win, lose, or draw, they're going to come out and they're going to put on a show. Um, the, the only thing is, is Melvin's that one guy, I think. That one guy that left Jackson, has moved on and gone to the Black Zillions and hasn't done too well. I think he's like f- lost four of his last five fights. Right. All right. Varner, you know, um, I-, I think this fight, I, I don't know how it's going to go. It could be quick. Varner, I don't think he's really been. Has Varner been knocked out? I don't think so. That's what I was. I don't think so. I don't either. think Varner's ever been knocked out. So, you know, it, hey, how's Melvin going to come into this? Being coming off the first time he's been knocked out. Also, remember when they missed this fight was supposed to happen two weeks ago. Yep. And if you remember, Melvin was all heated talking to Heidi Andrall. And he says, oh, you know, he lost it. That's it. He wasn't sick. And he, he, he's making comments about me. That's it. He blew it. He's never going to fight me again. He lost his opportunity. Oh, yeah, Melvin? Well, Dana just said that uh, you guys are going to fight in two weeks. All right, that's cool. That's cool. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. But uh, at the weigh-ins, I don't know if you saw, a heated stare down. These two do not like each other. Um, you know, you earlier, you brought up the prediction of pain. Pain, blood, and just, uh, you know, just bodies everywhere in this fight. <laughs> so what's your pick? Jamie Varner. Because right. I'm, go- I'm going with your blood. I'm going right, with your cousin. You're going with JV, my cousin. All right. Um, well, I, I look at this fight, and I, and I look at Melvin, and despite his knockout loss, 
Melvin, despite his four his, his four out of five uh, last fights he's lost, you know, he still is very dangerous. He's very explosive. He's got one punch, devastating knockout power. But with that, it's almost like he's a one trick pony. That's it. You know, you expect him to leap in with one big, huge, maybe another big, huge kind of bomb, but there's no, there's no method to his madness. There's no precision. There's no setting things up, putting your punches together, using combos, using feints. Whereas Jamie Varner, Jamie's got good boxing. He actually fought in amateur boxing. He grew up doing it, as with wrestling. You know, he's one of those guys who I thought for a long time, he's one of the better guys out there who's both sick at boxing and wrestling and, 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 and transitions from one to the next seamlessly. You know, he's, he's, it's not like he's punching and then he's wrestling. It's his boxing, sets up his takedown, goes to a, to, to back to striking, to reshooting. You know, it's a seamless transition, a seamless integration of two different arts. Um, I think his boxing, his pure boxing, I think, is better than Melvin's. I think Melvin's is explosive, but it's one thing at a time. You know, it's a one-trick pony. Whereas Jamie, you know, he's sharp, body, head, in and out, using fates, using his directs, and he does have the better of the two wrestling game. Like I said, he blends them together. I think Jamie Varner wins this fight. Weather's an early storm from Melvin. Um, I don't see him getting clipped. I see Melvin just trying to hop on him. Jamie being smart, setting it up, using his boxing, getting a takedown later on towards the end of the round. And uh, if not finishing it in the first round, in the second round, I think he'll finish it with a submission. Yeah, Varner does have submission ability. And he does. We know Melvin, you know, his, his defense has gotten better. But it's but, still lacking. Yes. And that's the thing, too, is, is by engaging with Melvin in and out, you know, waiting for his big shot, timing it, countering, and, and engaging in that striking game, it creates the opening for Jamie's wrestling. And I think he'll, he'll, I think he'll have success with every takedown he attempts. Yep. It's going to be fun. Going to be right, fun. All right, so you guys are two, two Vonners, and I'm going with Melvin Gyard in this fight. All right. The Gillard. Mel- Melvin, <laughs> Mel- uh, hold on. Melvin who? Melvin Gilliard. <laughs> Gilliard. Melvin Gilliard. <laughs> what about you, Heidi? I'm going to go with uh, Joey's cousin, Jamie Varner. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorely outnumbered here. I'm going with you. I'm, I'm taking Gilliard. Yeah, Gilliard I'm in this taking, fight I'm as saying well. he knocks him out in the second round. It's two to three. Two uh, to three. You think the se- a second round knockout, usually Melvin loses his steam after the first two, three minutes. Uh, you know, I think he's going he's gonna to catch him in the first and finish him off in the second. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we will see. We have to go to break right now. The MMA Fight Corner is sponsored by Fast Cash Title. Under three great locations and special December rates at 7.95%. Yes, you heard that right, people. 7.95%. Our man Mike will not be beat. He will not be undersold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And I also have to tell you guys about this amazing procedure. Okay, at Lazy Gonna Nevada that I had earlier this month, December 5th, um, here, in, here in Las Vegas, to correct my eyes to better than 2020. Because you think, were blind think, as a bat. I really was. I don't need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you. It's like, it, it is like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process, I ext- and extremely, extremely professional. I urge, urge anyone out there who has even thought about getting LASIK, to go speak to Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and zero, zero percent financing available. Call 702-636-2010, 636-2010. You'll be delighted you did. I know I was. I see amazing right now. I actually see what Joey looks like for the first time in I don't know how many years. Is that why you keep hitting on me? That's why I keep hitting on you, buddy. When we come <laughs> back, Chris Weidman joins us on the line. Heidi's hit list, so much more. MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio, 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Stop. Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. Sports fans, the oddsfather.com toll-free pick phone is red hot against the spread. Today's top play. Call 1-800-244-5506. Every Saturday morning, tune in right here, 920 AM, for the oddsfather.com radio show with two-time world champion handicapper Jeff Allen and Chuck Adele. Get the college bowl locked today free. Toll-free message. Call 1-800-244-5506. one 800 244-5506. 
The Dan Patrick Show. So what if they're rubbing it in? Dan Patrick Show. He's the new head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats, Tommy Tuberville, who joins us on the program. Well, I'm just trying to understand why the recruits would say this, that if the conversation was they're asking you about your future at Texas Tech. No, there was none whatsoever talk about that. Wasn't it wasn't on the table. No, they were specific, though. One of the recruits was that uh, ask you about your future there, and you mentioned you'd coached uh, Florida, Auburn, and recruited Ray Lewis, and then he said you excused yourself, and then you didn't come back. That's according to one of the recruits. No, they ask questions when you're standing there. You know, I, I don't know where any of that came from. I mean, that was just, uh, I'm sure that, you know, after after fact, uh, most of these kids haven't been recruited before, and uh, they might think that the head coach is supposed to hang around them for 48 straight hours, and uh, that's not what happened. The Dan Patrick Show. I probably could have done it better. It's the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know, it helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. The hottest in adult entertainment is just in Vegas, and it's only at the Rhino. Spearmint Rhino. The Spearman Rhino never cools down. Where will you be partying on New Year's Eve? Start making plans now. Locals know how to get the VIP treatment and to avoid the crowded strip. If you're looking for the best atmosphere and a party that never stops, get to the Rhino. The Spearman Rhino. $100 premium bottles from 11 a.m. until 11.59 p.m. for the ultimate VIP experience. Our biggest New Year's celebration yet. Spearman Rhino. Would you like to play Santa to somebody who really needs a Merry Christmas this year? Are you looking for a way to make your community a better place? Then please support local charity New Vista by helping them provide a very Merry Christmas to adults and kids with intellectual disabilities. Any donation amount you can give will help New Vista to provide a gift and holiday meal this season. Now it's simple, just go to newvistanv.org and click on I Want to Donate or call 457-4677. That's newvistanv.org and 457 457- 4677. New Vista is a local charity that provides homes and life skills support to Southern Nevadans that have intellectual disabilities so that they may experience life to the fullest. You can help. Visit newvistanv.org for more information or to donate now. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness, but I need to get my fill of MMA, man. I tune into the MMA Fight Corner. Rock and roll! The MMA Fight Corner. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Vonner, and Heidi Fang. And I got to tell you guys, I am stoked about our next guest coming up on the line right now. We have an interview with UFC middleweight Chris Weidman, pulled out of UFC 155, uh, fight against Tim Boach due to a shoulder injury, unfortunately. Is uh, Chris there? Yes, hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me on. Ah, uh, thanks for coming on again, Chris, man. How you doing? Doing good. Not bad at all. Just uh, hanging out a little bit. That's it. Right now, I'm, I'm going to ask you the obvious question first. How's the shoulder doing? Uh, it's all right. I haven't started uh, 
the process of actually moving and physical therapy and stuff. So I don't really 100% know, but I don't feel like it's going to be, you know, too bad. I feel like uh, it's going to be a quick recovery. Um, I start next week. I start physical therapy, so I'll really get to know them. What kind of physical therapy are you doing? Do like do they have planned? Um, I don't really know. I'm going to a good place um, uh, called Professional in Garden City. Uh, they they work with a lot of professional athletes. Uh, in the meantime, I've actually been going to a hyperbaric chamber uh, like three, four times a week. You're actually like four or five times a week. Wow. Um, so I'm hoping that's going to uh, make a difference in the recovery process as well. So. Does it does it hurt more right now because of I know like I, I had I had a couple of shoulder surgeries and I know when it's super cold I, I feel it on my shoulder and I'm here in Vegas like you're on the East Coast where it makes what I'm going through right now seem like summer vacation. I don't know I don't really uh, I haven't really noticed that though uh, I, I haven't really noticed that but I hear that a lot. I'm sure I'd be better off in uh, in Las Vegas with that but I, I've <laughs> never never really been out of New York lived out of New York with an injury so I don't know the difference. Now, speaking of New York, and this is a question I wanted to ask you, I just literally got back. Uh, my family uh, is in Merrick, which is not far from where you are. Not to oh, give yeah, it away. Right. That's two towns away. Two towns away, brother. And I couldn't yeah. believe the devastation when I got back there. Um, I had my family ha- over my house in Merrick, uh, and some family that was greatly affected by Sandy. How is everything going with you and your family, Chris? You know, first of all, my, yeah, my uncle actually lives in uh, Merrick. He, well, my uncle, he passed away, but my, so my aunt lives there now, but... Yeah, their house got uh, got beat up. They live on the water. Uh, yeah, but my house, um, we the whole first floor is completely ripped out. We actually just got construction starting started yesterday. Uh, we still haven't got um, like our money from insurance, so we're going on like the goodwill, and we're just trying to. With the problem is like funding money and stuff like that. So funding money to insur- to the contract is just to get started. Uh, but in the meantime, I just started to live upstairs, uh, upstairs of the house, and, and got out of my parents' house because it was, it was a real tough situation over there, just being in one room uh, with the two kids and the wife. So, uh, getting over back to my house and going up to the upstairs uh, is a little definitely a little better. But we have no like doors, <laughs> like downstairs doors. There's not much security, so if anybody tries to rob us. I'm prepared inside with my knives and guns. But that's about it. <laughs> I was going to imagine going to the house and see Chris Weidman there. Be like, now nah, maybe we'll go on to the oh, next wow, house. Wow, did I pick yeah, the wrong you, house? You have no idea. Like, yes, I'm walking up the stairs. I'm, oh, I start hearing crazy noises. I'm like, oh, crap. I have one arm, so I feel like this able to hurt. I'm going to do this. I like sneak into the kitchen, grab a knife, and lay down. <laughs> like, when it comes in here, I'm going left here with the knife. That should be good. That's it, but, man. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's crazy to hear the positivity in your voice, Chris. I mean, I it's was just going to say that it's been such a roller coaster year. I mean, things looking so good after the Munoz fight, and, and everyone talking about you know the possibility and you and on Anderson Silva, and then obviously the injury, and then the storm. I mean, how do you mentally stay so strong and positive? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm definitely a happy-go-lucky guy. Like, I deal with pressure pretty good, and I just kind of look over things a little bit. But also, I mean, to be honest with you, the real reason is there's so many people out here that have a lot worse off than I have, um, especially in the beginning. Like, we, we left and went to my parents' house. A lot of people had nowhere to go. Uh, older couples, some people didn't have flood insurance. We have flood insurance. So a lot of people's lives really got, our lives got turned upside down for, you know, a couple of months to a year. There's got there's people here whose lives have been turned, you know, changed around forever. Yeah, look at uh, there, there's all the couples. There's a couple next door to me. They have no flood insurance because if you live on the water and you paid off your mortgage, a couple next door to me is like seventy seven years old. Uh, so they didn't have flood insurance, and I don't know what they're going to do now. They're in they're in trouble. They had nowhere to go afterwards. They only had one floor, uh, so the whole first floor had about four feet of water in it. Um, so they, they have, I just, I mean, the guy's 70 some years old. I mean, this is taking years off his life. He's so stressed that I just feel terrible. You know, how much longer, uh, you know, you don't have much, you know, years left at that age and you want him to be, you know, happy, happy times, you know, you basically your retirement. And for that guy to be going such a stressful time and just such a big curveball into his life at this late age, I just feel terrible for him. I I'm, I'm young. I have plenty of years to go. So hopefully. <laughs> That's right, and you have a lot of great fights ahead of you, Chris, you know. And I'll tell you, it's so weird the way that storm hit because, you know, like Billy said, he's from Merrick. I- I'm from the Bronx, and I'm right on the other side of the Throgs Neck Bridge there, and my parents yeah. live a block off the water and no damage. 
You know, they didn't really? even, they didn't even lose power. But you know, and I have family inland in Long Island, and they got crushed. So it was like such a weird way that yeah, that storm it was, hit. It was definitely, definitely, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we tried to tape off everything too. It, it, there was no stopping it um, here. There's just too much water, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's good for your parents. Yeah, they got lucky, I'll tell you. Yeah, and you know, Chris yeah. talks about how some people have it way worse. If you talk to the people in Long Beach, <laughs> on Far Rockaway, oh, yeah. oh, oh right. yeah. they had like a foot of was like a foot or two of sand, right, Chris, in their homes. Yeah, that yeah, were like have sand. That uh, that was just weird for me too. We don't have like the beach here. It's just not from the bay. They have serious ocean water with you know beach sand going into their houses and their cars. It was just surreal to see those pictures afterwards. Yeah, friend of mine. Um, yeah, did you have any fish in the house or people? Who yeah, there, somebody. I remember somebody was like tweeting pictures of sharks running, like swimming through people's <laughs> front lawn in the down the Jersey Shore. It was just like Jeez. such a very crazy thing. You know what it is? I honestly, I, I bet you I could have saw some crazy things because I stayed home for it, and the water was down. Like I, I'm right on the water, so the water was about like eight feet, nine feet up, or maybe nine to ten feet. I thought the surge was. So there literally could have been things like that, but. It just happened to be, it was at night when it really got bad, bad, as far as the flooding. So you couldn't really see outside. I was it, literally inside just trying to save all the stuff in the first floor and bring it to the second floor the whole time. I, I really wish I got, I wish it happened during the day just to see, see like, uh, how bad it was at the peak. Because before it came and there was some light, and after it came uh, with the light, it was just nuts just to see. And then I, could, I can't imagine what it looked like during the the main part of the storm. Yeah, I think I probably would have probably preferred it to be at night because I used to swim in that Long Island Sound, and uh, I don't know if I, right. I don't know if I'd want to see what was swimming in there. Uh, I was I was well, I was going through the Long Island Sound. I was I literally got electrocuted. I was trying to fix things and stuff like that. We cut down trees and stuff in, in the water, like three feet, four feet deep, which is just the beginning of the, the storm. And yeah, that water is first of all, that water is disgusting. The canal water I'm in. I was in a kayak, and I'm not that good in the kayak. I fell out. And literally, in two se- first of all, in two seconds, I'm, first of all, I'm sinking in mud, like, literally up to my knees. And I'm freaking out. And I'm trying to, like, get to someone's dock. And the first dock I see to go go, uh, to go jump on to get myself back on the kayak, it says, if you touch my property, you'll be shot. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, all right, I'm not touching that guy's. <laughs> and you, and then, uh, then a crab bit my finger. I'm like, this is just miserable. And you actually, in the middle of a storm, respected that. I would have been like the one time, like, I don't care what he does. Let him shoot. I don't think, I think he, he might overlook oh, no, it in no, this that situation. Was a, it was a different time when I did that. Uh, wait, wait that so was just, that was a different time. To get this right, what you're telling me is that you fell in a lagoon in New York and got crabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you know, and it's funny too. You go into that, you go into that water, and it's so slimy. Yep. You want to get out so quickly. It's like, oh, you freak out. Yep. Now, before we go into some more fight talk, naturally, Chris, yep. we just want to. We're, we're thankful that your family's yep. well and that you guys yep. are. Uh, you know, Hold on. He's, hello. Can you not hear us? Hello. Do you lose Chris? us? We hear you, Chris uh, Weidman. You didn't go into any more water, did you? Uh, yeah, we lost him. We're gonna have to get him back. I think it's high tide again in New Long Island. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll tell you though, he he's right. That water is disgusting. It's, you know, I it, don't miss that. I'll tell you that. I, I do not you, miss it. You said something pretty funny before. It, it is true. <laughs> I, I, Chris, he's got a shoulder injury. Just went through the, the devastation of Sandy, and he does seem to be in great spirits. He, he, and I think that's gonna help him along with his recovery. I really do. Oh yeah. That's that's you know one thing Loretta Hunt actually had a great article about uh, uh, about the the heavyweight fight this weekend and one thing she talked about Junior dos Santos is the gift he had that always carried him through was optimism and you hear that in Chris's voice like he's just eternally optimistic right right Chris you back yes I'm back <laughs> I was gonna say I hope it's not high tide again <laughs> what's that I hope it wasn't high tide again we lost you on the phone no I am in the war zone right now and the the towers got ruined with the storm so Sprint service is the worst down here so I'm sorry if I'm in and out. Well, we're just thankful that your family's well, you're well, and like I said, I hope you guys get through this with a, a speedy recovery, not only with your shoulder, but also with the devastation of Sandy. I appreciate that. Thank you. And now, well, now on to tomorrow night, because tomorrow night, obviously, I'm sure you're very disappointed. You were supposed to be here in town right now, getting ready for your fight with Tim Boach, and you had, you had to be pulled out. But you're, luckily, your teammate, Constantino Filippo, st- stepped up. You know, and now we have a very interesting fight. But not just that. There's quite a few middleweight fights tomorrow night, all with possible contenders coming out of them. Um, is there any one fight that you're looking at particularly? Uh, I'm looking at them all. I'm pumped for uh, my teammate, Kostas. Uh, I want to see him do well. So, obviously, I'm looking at that fight. 
Um, but oh yeah, also you know Yushin Okami, Belcher. I think they're both you know studs, and I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, Belcher looks. You know after they you know they're ready for and see if he you know improved a lot. Yeah. Um, and I honestly one of my favorite fighters there are in the sport is Cain Velasquez, and I, I love Junior Dos Santos too. But Cain Velasquez is one of those guys who I've been following since he started, and uh, I love his uh, his style, and I try to mimic it a lot. Uh, don't go, you know, starting the sport, but. Yeah, he. Uh, I'm really excited for him, and he's got a tough fight ahead of him. So this is, uh, this is definitely a bunch of fights I'm very interested in. Chris, we all put our picks in. What is your pick for the main event bout? Junior Dos Santos, I, I take it it's going to be Cain Velasquez? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Yeah, I think Cain Velasquez is going to win. I'm not, it's it's just going to be a scary, you know, three three to five minutes. Um I just think the thing is that Cain Velasquez, his main thing is cardio and putting pressure on guys. And to do that, you have to be in people's face, and you have to be able to roll punches, and, and that's what he's really good at. But you, with a big guy like Dos Santos, you get scary. You know, the guy clips the back of your head when you're rolling a punch. Uh, it could be over. Hello? Yeah, yeah, oh, we got you. Sure still there. Yeah, we got uh, <laughs> No, just because I have no, this phone is sketchy right now. So <laughs> Anyway, I apologize. So... Um, yeah, so as long as he doesn't, I, I think he's gonna. I think his game plan is gonna be what he usually does, which is to move forward and put a, generate a lot of pressure with punches, kicks, and, and takedown attempts. And uh, I just think uh, in the first couple of minutes, Dos Santos is gonna be going for that knockdown. He's gonna have the opportunity to go get it in the beginning because Dos Santos, uh, the will be right there. But um, I'm just hoping he gets through the first couple of minutes and, and, and maintains that pressure. And I think it could be a dominating performance. Now, going back to the Belcher Okami fight, I found it. You, you, you talk about the difference uh, now. I mean, I think that first fight was UFC 62. I mean, if you look, Alan Belcher didn't even have that horrible uh, Johnny Cash tattoo. <laughs> and uh, yeah. in, I remember Yushin, you know, totally dominated the fight with the takedowns. Okay, but uh, one of the one things is you saw how young. Alan Belcher was in that fight. Remember uh, when he slammed Okami on his head and the crowd's going nuts and he starts egging on the crowd while he's almost in a rear naked choke position. He's kind of like, right. you know, a, a totally different guy now. A, a more focused, a much better uh, uh, Alan Belcher. Do you think this fight goes differently than the first one? Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest... Uh, you know, not knocking Okami, but I just don't think he's looked as good in his last couple of fights. Um, and I think Belcher is looking looking a lot better. So I, I do think, I, I you know, I just did look at the odds, and I'm surprised to see that uh, Okami is actually the favorite still. Yeah, just, uh, I could see Okami sweet. getting the takedowns and, you know, kind of squeezing, it, squeezing him a little bit. And, uh, I mean, I, it's possible to get the decision, but I see it, I definitely see it as more of a, Belcher kind of defending more, and even if he gets taken down, throwing up some jujitsu, getting some respect with that, maybe getting back to his feet and, and finishing the fight. Definitely. There's been a lot of late money on on Okami. It was early on the money was coming in for Belcher. In the last 24 hours, there's been a lot of late money moving in there on Okami. And and Who to told me, you that? say what? Who told you that? Uh, MMA <laughs> odds. <laughs> oh, oh, <really>? Joey Odessa. <laughs> MMAodds.com. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, I mean, you know what it is? I think a lot of people, you're showing comedy for the title, so maybe he's a bigger name and people just know him and think he's big and strong, but I, I, I think he is. And he, he's very basic and he, he's tough to beat. you got to take it to him because he stays behind that jab and he's strong and tough to take down and whatnot. But I think uh, Belcher's too much of an athlete, and uh, I think he I think he could overwhelm Okami. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Chris. And listen, after uh, tomorrow night, I wouldn't be surprised if when you come back, we see a possible matchup between you and Belcher. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised either. I think that would be an exciting fight. See, I would rather have Michael Bisbee because he likes to talk a lot. He and, does, uh, doesn't and, he? And people think he's really, really good because he talks a lot. So uh, I would like to discredit him like he's been trying to discredit me all over the internet <laughs> oh <laughs> anything you want to say say yeah, well, it right now on our <laughs> show chris come on <laughs> give it to me it. come on with long I, island guys good. i've been getting i've been giving everybody some good titles to write <laughs> i can't do it anymore I, i'm making everybody go crazy over here <laughs> well, you know what stylistically uh, of all the guys in the middleweight division 
Michael Bisping is the one who ha- has fared the best against great wrestlers. You know, he's he's got a good style of sticking and moving, and he, he's so good at, at popping back up, you know, once he gets taken down. A lot of people said how Chael looked horrible in their fight when he fought Bisping, and, you know, but I think the opposite. I think Bisping just looked amazing. He was so quick to get back to his feet, even against the Rashad fight, and every every top wrestler he's fought, he's, he's done phenomenal. So stylistically, this is a great matchup. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think he did look good against Shale. That was probably the best I've ever seen him. Um, but I just, I mean, I'm conf- very confident that if I get a hold of him, uh, it's, he's not going to just bounce up. And if he does, I think I just, my pressure, my size, and my wrestling and power and everything, I just think I overwhelm him. But uh, I also, I mean, as far as, like, him getting a title shot, like, right away, which might happen because I've seen Dana White say that, I just think, I just don't know why people want to see that guy. He's fought four really tough guys and had some huge fights, and he's lost every single time he's fought like a really good guy. So what may, what's the difference going to be when he fights Anderson Silva? You know what, though, at the end of the day, like, okay, so being diehard fans, Phil and I and everyone out there, we agree across the board that you should be given the title shot. But yeah. for for the general public, it, this 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 whole thing comes down to sales. It's what fight can you sell? And unfortunately, right now, your your non diehard general public, they don't know you as much as they know Bisping because of his run on the Ultimate Fighter, because he has been the main line, the headline. So for the UFC, it just seems like it's an easier sell. You know, ha- yeah. had had the Boach fight happen, now that's three in a row on 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 main cars where you dominated someone, you know, or looks great. You know, you got Maya, you got the Munoz. Now if the Boach fight happened, you did that there. Then you got a guy that. that every Everyone knows and is an easier sell, but for, from a sales point, Bisping's just an easier sell right now. Yeah, well, I think the UFC uh, is a strong enough company to market me and, and get me to where Bisping is at. If they wanted to, so that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. That's the know? plan. Well, you, you've definitely I mean, you know, noticed like, the talking trying, works. You, you try to like, you know talk more of this and that, but the thing is, look at the champions. The champions <laughs> don't need to talk. I'm not looking to be the most famous guy. I'm looking to be the champion, you know, and that that all that other stuff is going to come. You know, none, there's no, there's no people, there's no champion out there like a big talker. You know, yeah, really that's isn't. true. That's very true. So yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm aspiring to be one of those guys, not the, not the, you know, the guys who are just trying to talk their ways and stuff. Even though I'm, 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 I'm playing, I'm like toying with the line because I got frustrated. <laughs> and I don't like that. Yeah. Well, but, listen, Chris, you're just basically reacting to something. I mean, somebody, you know, and kinda... you're getting asked questions. You know, you, if you keep getting asked the same questions, the questions, you just, you know, answer it. And uh, you want to be a little bit more, you, you know, the whole thing is just, like, as far as the entertainment thing, you want to be a little bit more, um, I guess, like, more confident, or uh, I don't even know the word, right? Like, more animated or whatever, or just go a little bit harder on what you believe, you know, just to get more reaction out of fans and get, you know, that, you know, that's the whole thing. But um, I'd rather just be myself and just and fight and become champion and, and that's it, you know, and just keep fighting. Uh, so that's my that's my goal. I'm not I'm not just trying to. I don't want to talk myself into this title. I, I really don't like that. I just want to fight. Yeah, well, the best guys and get there. You're you're definitely doing the one thing that I like, and that's that that's the Patrick Swayze Dalton character, and that's be nice until the time comes to not be nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I understand, you know, we, we had Biz being on the show a couple of weeks ago and he was all like, oh, Weidman is not the next great white hype and all of this. And, yeah. you know, I, yeah, he's so, but you know, he's so, I've been mad too. The guy, how long has he been in the UFC? I don't know how long. Uh, tough, tough but, three. Yeah. How long? It's since the Ultimate Fighter three. I think that's 2006. How many, how many years do you think that is? Uh, it's seven years, I believe. Yeah. So he's no been in the UFC shots. for about seven years. I've been in the U.S. for one year, and I'm ranked ahead of him on every single ranking board. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Damn, drop so, a quote. Does that, does There's not a that quote. Out. I mean, the guy just started to, to know who I am. He keeps going, I don't even know who Weidman was. I don't know. Of course he did. I just got in the UFC a year ago, and I'm already ranked ahead of you. <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh, I'm talking about it. making yourself look bad. Anything <laughs> I can do, you can, anything you can do, I can do better, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, Chris, we we actually are are running and, and down. The, for the record, I do like I do like Bisbee. I understand what he does, and it's all good. No, he he definitely has a bad rap because if you talk to the guy not in front of a microphone, if you're just sitting down talking, oh, yeah. he's a good he, guy. Exactly. You know, even my my coach is literally really pissed off at what he said because he was with me when I was cutting the weight. I cut thirty two pounds in ten days, and he was all and, 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 um you know just he was like worried about me like when he was watching me cut weight and like he was wanting to take pictures with me. And, uh, you know, really cool in the dressing room and stuff like that. And he's seen what I went through. And 
you know, there's not too many guys who take fights on short notice and win. Short notice, especially ten days or even a couple of weeks. No one does that and wins. They, you know, they, they get in there, might have a good fight and lose. I went out there and won, and I had to cut all that weight to 32 pounds. Bisping knows that, and then still he has the balls to go out there and 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 discredit that, like, oh, it was boring that I couldn't, you know, he's falling asleep in the locker room. It was like, you know, that's kind of like, it's just he's kind of two faced with that. Well, I don't but, know. Uh, uh, Chris, I don't know if it's real or not, but all I know is it's making for a great build-up. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I can't wait to fight him. One day it's happened. Even if he loses the belt, well, I'm hoping one day I get to fight him. Me too. You think you're going to get your fight with Anderson Silva one day? I hope so. I mean, I I, I take that fight any day over Michael Bisbee. <laughs> Bisbee's more of a fun thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think's a tougher opponent for you stylistically? You or Anderson or Bisping? Um, I think Anderson Silva because style. It doesn't even matter what his style is; he's that good. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not even comparing apples. I think Bisping's on. I mean, I think Anderson Silva's on a completely different level. Chris, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask you. Uh, I didn't actually hear you say that uh, when you will be returning. Is it maybe about three months or four months? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be uh, at 90% at three months out from surgery, which is about a month ago. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking to return into a, into a fight like May or June. I should be ready in four months from the surgery, 100% to, like, spar and everything. So looking like May, June for a return. Nice. Most likely May, to be honest. L- looking forward to it. And I have to tell you, that video that your wife put up with you and the anesthesia was <laughs> was very amusing. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sure you've taken the camera away for her just in case. Uh, how bad is it? I don't even remember that. I, I, when I saw it, I was like, I cannot believe that was me and I'm talking like that. This is <laughs> it was I funny. That up. Well, she set it up like that, Chris. You know, you got you to give just a regular she plain is- phone next time. Do you know that she was literally, she was really asking those questions to get so bad at me. Oh, yeah, like, she was. She was pumping yeah. you for information. It's like a truth I'm not serum, even kidding. dude. She said that she was looking around. She was like, the only reason I stopped, I was going to ask you more questions is because, like, the nurse just thought I was crazy. <laughs> they were, like, looking at her weird. I'm like, you are terrible. <laughs> me. Well, Chris, listen, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the MMA Fight Corner. As always, you are always welcome on our show. And we want to wish you a speedy recovery. We want to wish all the best to your family. And we're going to see you very soon, man. We look forward to seeing you fight again. Get well. Get well. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, Chris. Be well, brother. Right, bye-bye. All right, man. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, he, he, you right. I can't believe he is in great spirits, man. He's he solid, is. dude. He's it's, a solid, it's, dude. It's been a, you know, like I said, an, an up and down year. And, um, you know, there's, we never, by the way, made the picks on these middleweight fights. We got yours. Okay. I, I, well, you, you know Belcher, mine, yeah. Belcher. I got Okami. Yeah, I'm going with Lieben, Belcher on too. Yeah. and Costu. Philip. Yeah, I got Lieben. But talk about up and down year. Derek Brunson, two losses, doesn't make the ultimate fighter, gets that last minute call fighting Chris Lieben. I don't know if it's going to work out for him, though, but it so should do you be have? fun. I'm going to have to go with uh, Chris Lieben. Okay. I'm going to pick Alan Belcher, and I'm picking Tim Boach. Okay, so we agree on Lieben, but I got I go to Okami and uh, and Costas, Costas Philippou. All right. Wow. Okay, I'm not even giving mine. Go to the picks. Go to MMAFightCorner.com, and you'll see. Oh, are we going to have our picks up there, Heidi? Yes. Uh, yes, Heidi's, we will. Heidi will have the picks up there if you want to uh, win some money when you bet. You bet on the MMA Fight Corner. And we want to thank Chris Weidman and you, the fight fans. Remember, visit MMAFightCorner.com for all your breaking MMA news and exclusive interviews. We'll see you right back here inside the Fight Corner next for a best of 2012 show on January 1st. Be safe till then, everybody. Fox Butch. This seems just a tad insane. KBAD Las Vegas. Honor, duty.